Hello, and welcome back to my single player survival world. I am the survival architect, and in today's video, we're going to start off by extending not this one, not that, not that corridor, but this one over here. Uh, I want to extend it out that way, but not for just normal general storage, no. I am completely out of storage for my full shulker boxes. Um, currently, my farms are dumping out a whole bunch of items, they go into shulker boxes, and they end up in that chest there. I just cleared that chest of like 20 shulker boxes of melon slices. It's a problem. So, you might have seen my last video where I constructed a shulker box saucer. That was actually because I need it in this world. Uh, I am going to pump all my shulker boxes, my full ones, over across the top here and into the shulker sorter system, which is going to be sitting in this area here with the chests in line here. So that there'll be double chests here and here. And they'll extend probably about as high as these chests in here do, because I like the grand feeling, and it'll give me a whole lot of free storage space for mostly the melons. There are there, There's a lot of those that get popped out. I might have to deactivate that farm at some point. But uh, currently, I've only got four items, but as more farms get added, I will increase the... Uh, or I'll, I'll change the filters in the, shul the shulker sorter. So we need to clear out a whole bunch of stone here, then we need to construct the shulker sort of. Now the other thing I want to do in this time lapse is to hammer out some stone here. Uh, I need an entrance to the base. Currently I'm just flying in that th this little hole here. Uh, you can see it just there. I all, all I do to get out is fly up here if my elytra will work. So uh, I'm gonna put an entrance in here and then come back in just a second. So let's hop into the time lapse and get a whole bunch of stuff constructed. So you can see that we've done an awful lot of work. Um, that time lapse is about four hours or so. Um, I got bored and I just I just wanted to get it all done. Turns out I haven't finished the decoration. Oh well. Um, but essentially, if I need more stuff, uh, I can put it in here. But first, I've got to fill up all 21 modules. And currently, I've only got three filled. So I've got the uh, melon slices, the pumpkins, and the dripstone in that order. Remember that. Um, so, if we go back up into the redstone, you can see there's a new hopper line running across the top there. That's where the shulker... Oh, okay, I've fallen off. I've fallen off. It's problematic. 
Up here is where the shulker boxes come in. They get put into this dispenser, placed down, uh, and then, oh, well, the, the, the shulker box is detected in that dispenser. The I or the, the box gets placed down, uh, unlocked, or the, the hopper below gets unlocked for one redstone tick, allowing one item to pass through it, and then the shulker box is broken, which puts both of them into the system. Now, if I just go over here, you'll see where they go next. So the shulker box, okay, I've fallen off, I've fallen off again. The shulker box flows somewhere. There, there. The shulker box flows into this hopper here, and the item that we've taken out of it flows into this hopper here. <coughs> um, they're both locked by redstone torches, and there's an AND gate down here, which is a fancy redstone thing, I explained it better in the video, um, that essentially allows these hoppers to be unlocked when there is an item in both of them. So first, the, the item that we've taken out will get... Uh, sent into the system, and exactly six redstone ticks later, the shulker box will be sent into the system. Now, because the uh, the hopper chains are the exact same length between where the item is locked and where the item ends up going, um, six, red, uh, if six redstone ticks will be constant across the, the lot. So, it also just so happens that the amount of time it takes for the observer to update, push this piston across, push this piston down, and then unpower the torch is six redstone ticks so that it's pretty much timed perfectly that when the hopper over here gets unpowered it just so happens that the right the shulker box is right over the top of it which ends up working perfectly so that's the point of the, the whole honey block system and this system in the back here then if we just drop down here uh don't have any blocks that's okay um you can see that the item will come in down here and end up in that hopper there and the shulker box will end up in this dispenser. Um, shulker, gets, shulker box gets placed. Uh, the item gets put into it. And then this observer chain and repeater chain is just so long, uh, just long enough that the timings work out perfectly to unlock this hopper and break the shulker box with this piston just after the item has drained into the shulker box. It then gets sent across and up this dropper chain and into the chest. So you can see that I've already put all the melon slices, all the pumpkins, and all the pointed drip sewn into the system. So that's how the system works. You can see, that obviously, we've done an awful lot of work already, but I'm on a bit of a roll. And the next thing we need to do is make some sort of entrance into this place, because like I said in the intro, I'm currently flying out of a hole, and there's no way to get into this place if I die and lose all my stuff. Uh, there's no way to get back in here if I don't have Feather Falling right now, or an Elytra. So I'm going to go and get those things. Uh, sorry, not get the get the Elytra. Um, put in a, a walkable entrance, and it'll probably go somewhere here. Uh, the plan is to make kind of like a lab door, and then a cave entrance that pops up out there somewhere. Um, so yeah, up there is the carrot farm. Um, but that, that's the plan now, so we will be hopping into another time-lapse because I'm really liking the time-lapses at the moment. We'll hop into another one and get a bit of an entrance constructed in this area here. Let's go. I've done a fair bit of work, but I've actually managed to lose all the footage. Again, it's um, really quite annoying. I've, I've got the footage of getting like this two by however many wide staircase looking thing in. Um, but other than that, I don't have any footage of me actually texturing this. I wish I did. Um, but I don't. I have obviously done all the texturing here, and I, or not the texturing, the uh, shaping here, and I've got a rough outline for what kind of the shape up there will look like, and that will kind of narrow as we go up. So if you if I fly fly up here, you can see that it come, becomes a bit narrower, pops out the top, and then we're just here next to the starter base. The main base is just up there. You can see the beacons and the mountain wireframes. But so that's uh, that's all we'll do on here for the for this episode. Um, I'm actually going to move away from the base now. Um, we've been working on this area for a few episodes now, and I was really motivated to do it, but it probably is starting to get a bit boring. We've done a lot of stuff here. We've made all of this decoration, uh, made farms, made uh, a whole lot of stuff, but it's time to move on to do something else, so I'm going to pop through into the nether now and catch up with you in there. I've popped through into the nether, into this area which you saw a couple of episodes ago. Um, 
what I've already done is kind of laid out where the... So this is the location of our nether hub, by the way. Um, up there is in the roof is where our current portals are, but I want to make some sort of nether hub here. Um, so what I've done is I've gone 64 blocks in every direction and then removed every block that is only three up from this area. Obviously, I'm going to remove a bit more than that. It'll probably go up to kind of this roof area here. We're not going to do that today. The first thing we're going to do is put some sort of floor down because I don't think this is safe currently. Actually, I know it's not safe. So we're going to put a floor down and kind of get it not really that spawnable. We'll light some, oh boy. We'll, we'll light some of it up. And uh, yeah, so we'll hop into the second time lapse of this video. Meant to be the third. Losing footage is great. Um, we'll hop into well, the time lapse and get a floor constructed in here and maybe take out some blocks if I'm feeling up good. So let's hit it now and I'll be back in just a second. So I've done one quadrant of this, as you will have seen, but this is an absolutely mind-numbing task. It is so boring. Uh, it took 40 minutes, and most of my cobblestone that I brought over with me, which was like three shulker boxes, to fill up, to basically build a giant spawning platform for magma cream. Um, and then I've started this bit over here, but that'll come later. Um, I've, I've said previously that this is going to be a bit of a mega project uh, that I will work on over a lot of time. Um, so, you know, just chipping away at it for now. It's looking pretty good. So, well, <laughs> it's existing. That uh, is what I mean to say. But um, that's all I've got for this area. Uh, so let's pop back through into the overworld and do some stuff there because I'm a bit all over the place and I don't want to be placing just... A gigantic platform of stone for the rest of this episode. So, let's hop back through now and I'll be back. The other thing that I've done kind of in between everything this episode is, well, the, there was a thunderstorm going around and I actually have a channeling trident and you might be able to see these boats, these terrifying boats that have either one or two charged creepers in them. I think I've got six or five of them all up and they're all named so they're not going to despawn but uh, I captured these ones in boats after the storm ended but while the storm was going, I used them to collect some heads, as you can see by the craters that are sitting in this uh, this desert over here. Uh, and don't worry, de that desert will be uh, terraformed to make it look a whole lot better than what it is now. So if we just pop back down into the base, I've actually collected the all or, or my heads together, all my mob heads. Oh my god, why is it lagging? Um, I've collected all my mob heads together, which is great. Um, they're all sitting in here, so... This is the box of the uh, the, the mob heads that aren't actually vanilla. They're, they're, they're from Vanilla Tweaks. Um, I'll leave a link to Vanilla Tweaks in the description below. Um, here I've also got the uh, mini blocks, which I've used a little bit around, the, uh, mostly over at the village area. But I managed to get these, which are the vanilla mob heads. Four zombie heads, two charged creeper heads. Oh, the charged creeper heads aren't vanilla. Oh, well. Um, three skeleton skulls and, th and six creeper heads. So... Yeah, I, um, I blew up a lot of mobs to get those, but and died a number of times, which is why I don't have any levels left after this episode. But I thought I should just let you guys know that that was something that I'd done, because I had fun with it. I got bored down working on this, and I went and blew up some stuff. So that, that was a lot of fun for me. Um, also, I'm I, I, sh I think I should say that I've never actually built in this modern, futuristic-y style before, and I'm really loving how this base is looking with the long corridors, especially... When you go down here, because it's like you got this big, nice open area, and then it gets a bit smaller. Then it gets a bit smaller again when you come down here. Now, obviously, not done any any of that or any more of that so far, but I'm liking how it's looking. So now we're going to pop back up to the surface to the starter area, and I'm going to show you what's happening over there. So we're back over here at the starter area, which I'm going to be honest, it needs a lot of work. Um, when I built this, I hadn't 
re- I didn't really think through this house. It's not great. It do- it doesn't look fantastic, and this place has just been absolutely wrecked. Like there's a number of creeper holes. We've got chests everywhere. There's a uh, makeshift super smelter that isn't actually a super smelter. Got a bamboo over there. Uh, pumpkins and melons that I was growing before I made the melon pumpkin farm, some random trees, and no villagers, and just a whole bunch of random stuff sitting around here. So I think it's time we clean that up. Um, we're just going to clean it up in this episode and make it look a bit better. We're not actually going to um, completely rework how this this village looks yet. We will be, uh, probably in, one, uh, in a future episode, but uh, today we're just going to clean it up a bit and use that to finish out the episode. So, uh, we're going to jump into the third and final time lapse of this video and get the village area cleaned up right here, you know, fix all the creeper holes, um, might tear this down, I'm not sure, and just get this place generally cleaned up. Uh, The last thing I wanted to say is this guy is stuck in here. Um, I will be transporting him because the the husks don't burn in sunlight, so I will transport him into a cage in the base and keep him there because he's been there since literally episode one. So let's hop into that now and I'll be back in just a second. That's this area all nice and cleaned up. We got rid of the dripstone area here. That's how I built the dripstone farm that we uh, built earlier on in this this world. Um, I cleaned up the glow berries that were sitting around, all the chests, uh, the two half exploded houses that were here and over there. Uh, I got rid of the makeshift smelter that was here, collected a bunch of XP from it. I've gone from level seven to level 35, so that's nice. And then fixed all the creeper holes that were sitting in here. Um, now in oh we missed this one. Um, in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to make this uh, whole village look really nice. Uh, we'll, we'll probably open with that, um, and I'll probably tear this down because I'm hating it more and more the more I see it. So um, we'll tear that down and rebuild something in its place that looks a bit better. And all in all, get this place to to be a uh, a pretty functional and or well, not functional, uh, just a nice looking starter area that we were using. Uh, put some chests in the house and then maybe put up a wall around it and bring some villagers over from our villager breeder, which is over that, over yonder. So that's really all I've got for this video. I just want to say, um, as, as of recording this video, uh, it's been two days since my video on the 118, like a 118 seed um came out and the amount of support that I've got on that is amazing. So thank you all very much for that. Um, honestly, like I, I, I really wanted to see some of the new terrain and kind of just have a look around a random scene. And I found some really cool stuff. So I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it and that you want to see more of it. I might do some more of that stuff in the future, but um, that is all I've got time for today. If you like this video, make sure to hit the uh, thumbs up button. And if you want to see more stuff from me, Feel free to subscribe to the channel. You'll be seeing some videos in the top left and top right, uh, a subscribe in the bottom somewhere, and the 117 single player survival playlist on your screen right now. So, thank you all very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. I've been the Survival Architect. Have a good one.